The truth behind how Wolverine's claws work is one of the coolest things you could know. In the comics, the exact mechanism by which Wolverine's claws extend and retract has never been fully explained, and there have been different explanations over the years, ranging from the claws being stored inside tubes inside his forearms that cause Wolverine's unsheathing sound to happen as his claws slide along them, to them sheathing themselves in a layer of specialized muscle tissue. One early explanation from the X-Men comics that gives us an initial idea suggests that when Logan, down on his luck, volunteered to become part of the Weapon X program that was working on making a team of its very own super soldiers, he quickly became the star test subject due to his healing factor and allowed his metal claws to be implanted in him. And in order for Wolverine to extend his claws, the scientists working on the program also made sure that they implanted within his body a special metal device that was designed to respond to the electrical signals generated by Logan's nervous system. So when Wolverine wanted to extend his claws, the device would pick up the electrical signals sent by Wolverine's brain, and would then activate the claws pulling them out of their sheaths and locking them into place in his hands. As useful as this and other comic explanations are, they really don't cover how Wolverine's current character works, which has a far more interesting explanation. We know Logan, being born in the 19th century, was born with a genetic mutation that naturally gave him claws made out of bone. Bone that, much like the metal claws in our first example, is stored inside his forearms when not in use, and also reacts to the electrical signals coming from his nervous system that he can control at will, much like how you or I would control our own hands. Specifically, in order for Wolverine's natural claws to work, they would have to be connected to a series of smaller tendons and muscles inside his forearms that would only be natural to him. And it's these series of smaller muscles connected to the bones of his forearms that would have to individually connect to each of his three claws, allowing him to dynamically adjust each of them separately and with great precision, as we would each of our fingers which he would have a hard time doing if the muscles were too large. You see, generally smaller muscles have finer motor control than larger muscles because smaller muscles have fewer muscle fibers and thus a lower innervation ratio, meaning the number of muscle fibers being controlled by a single motor neuron is lower, allowing for more precise and delicate movements. For example, each of the nerves connecting to each of the many muscles in your fingers don't connect to as large or beefy of a muscle as the nerves innervating the muscles in your legs. That's see one nerve sending impulses to a muscle that has many more muscle fibers within it, and thus is able to exert less control over those muscle fibers. And it's these unique smaller muscles in Wolverine's forearms that Wolverine would simply contract to extend his claws out of his arms, and release or relax to let his claws slide back into their natural resting state. And this all makes sense when just looking at how the character extends their claws by tightening their fist, because the tightening or balling up of a person's hand is the direct result of them contracting the muscles in their forearms. And hey, this isn't too far off from how the retractable claws of an animal would work. Critically, Wolverine must make sure to keep his hands, namely his wrists, straight when extending his claws, which luckily happens naturally when flexing the muscles in your forearms, or else he would absolutely shoot his claws straight through his wrist. And before you think that this is it, Wolverine's got some major problems to get around here, starting with how his claws are actually stored within his arms. Wolverine's claws, especially after getting the adamantium ice cream dip, are sometimes depicted as being rather large. So how do his claws actually fit inside his forearm and get around his bones? Well, we can answer this one too. Much like our animal's claws, his would have to slide back into a sheath of muscle tissue that specifically rests in between his radius and ulna, with the claws naturally sliding closer together to fit into his arms. And while most of the time Wolverine's claws aren't depicted as being gigantic, this still leaves us with the biggest problem to solve of how would his claws leave to get through his wrist and hands, let alone his forearms, when the radius and ulna of a normal person nearly touch together? You know, right before the many ball-like carpal bones of the wrist? Well, the film X-Men actually answers this question for us, as when the X-Men first come across Logan and he is brought to the mansion only to end up on the examination table, we can see that through their x-rays of his skeleton, his claws slide closer together as they retract in his arm, and later when he flexes his muscles, extending his claws, we can see that Logan's entire arm reshapes itself with the ends of his ulna and radius, pulling away from one another to make the space needed for his claws to push through his hands. That also widen themselves, allowing the claws to slide through. So not only can Wolverine precisely control the movement of each of his claws with a specialized set of muscles, but he also would have to possess an equally unique set of ligaments, being the flexible tissue within our joints that connect our bones together. That for Logan would have 
have to connect the bones of his arms, wrists, and hands in such a way that they would actually allow and cater to his bones being pushed apart in an expanding lateral motion. Meaning that this guy has one weird ligament structure that either looks very different from a regular person, or his claws would have to slide in between certain ligament structures if he was ever to hope to move his hand around normally when his claws are sheathed. But seeing just how drastically his arm reshapes itself, this likely isn't correct. No, the real answer is far more painful. Given the small space of Logan's human-sized wrist and the size of his claws, it's likely that in order for the five carpal bones of his hands to make enough space for the claws extension, the ligaments of his hand would have to fully rip apart. As part of a painful process that Wolverine goes through every time he uses his claws, only for them to heal back together afterwards. But this still doesn't help explain the biggest problem that eventually got thrown into how Wolverine's claws work, being the hundred or so pounds of liquid animantium that was grafted onto his bones. Other than the serious problems that this would create for the production of Logan's red blood cells, it would also severely disrupt Logan's ability to retract and extend his claws at all. I mean, when it comes to the ligament tearing process of the bones in Logan's arms and hands, this all should work as normal. Kind of. The new problem Logan's body and healing factor would be faced with is the adamantium would disrupt and downright stop the most necessary part of the entire process. Vitally, tendons and ligaments connect to bone through a pivotal structure called an enthesis, which is a specialized region where the collagen fibers of a tendon or ligament are literally woven into the bone, and without, none of us would be able to move around. Wolverine's claw process should work as normal, but now Wolverine's bones and enthesis sites are completely covered up in a shiny new metal, effectively blocking off his ligaments and tendons from ever reattaching to any of his bones. And this problem isn't just in his hands and arms, but goes for his entire body. Thus, Wolverine's adamantium upgrade would render him unable to move in general. But then again, maybe not. After all, adamantium, like Batman's strength, being fictional is not like regular metal. And in the comics, adamantium has not only at times have been shown to interact directly with the electrical signals of a person's organic nervous system, but unlike ordinary metal is also shown to allow Wolverine's tendons and ligaments to grow and attach directly into it no problem. With parts of the adamantium going so far as to mimic the enthesis sites necessary for Wolverine's ligaments and tendons to heal and reconnect themselves to his bones. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved my most interesting detail for last. Other than Wolverine's claws originally only being part of his gloves and not his body, due to his adamantium enhancement, Wolverine can actually lift up to two tons of weight, kind of like Batman's ridiculous strength. So hey, watch this video for more interesting questions about your favorite characters only on Trick Theory.